Okay. Okay. Um, we got some new products. What's this? We do. These are so cool. These do exactly what they look like they do. They are 2.1 millimeter DC jacks, your standard DC jacks, but they have a switch built in. So if you have a project that uses a standard uh, 2.1 millimeter DC jack type thing. This is handy. You put this in that place and then there's a switch added on. And if you don't mind we working old boards, which like we did here for our demo, which I'll also show in the overhead. Why didn't we stock this before? This it, is like the handiest thing. It <laughs> took me like two years to find the factory that makes this and then like six months to get them to ship it to me. Yeah, That's that, why. That, that, okay, that makes sense. That All right, makes we sense. also have another one. Okay. There's two versions. Yeah. It's the other one. The other one has a walker switch. So there's a slide switch and a locker switch. Um, they're both almost like identical. You can look at the ratings, like one is a little bit more current than the other. I think the rocker switch is a little bit more, but they're pretty much the same. That's it. It's, it's just one piece, you just click and it's on, it's off. It's like really nice. Now the Metro M0 has an on off switch already, but still this is like a very satisfying switch. All right. Let's go to the overhead and I'll show us off. So yeah, it just, it just solders in to your standard through hole 2.1, it's like, you know, the standard, everybody uses the same uh, layout. And then you turn this on, it's on. You turn it off, it's off. It's so easy. And then I'll show the rockers. This is the, the on-off switch version. You can see that on-off switch. And then let me pull out the other ones. Give me a moment. More demo. Here you go. So this one is a rocker switch version. Otherwise the same. Very well made, very durable. Um, yeah, I saw these on a product and I was like, well, I gotta have these. So it took me a while, but I, I found the, the factory that makes it. And uh, we got a lot in stock. So check them out. And okay. uh, they're, they're great either for a new project or for rebuilding an old one. Yeah. Okay, next up. Calipers. Calipers, but not just any calipers. These were actually recommended by Naomi Wu. These are her favorite calipers. They're solar, but they have a battery. So they work both when there's sunlight and if you're a vampire, you can use a battery. Okay. They come in two styles. Sometimes we get black ones, sometimes we get silver ones. So you might get two different colors, but I can show it off on the overhead. Okay. So as you may expect, there's this little solar panel here. You turn it on, you can measure stuff. You can switch between inches and millimeters. So 0.61 inch, 15.6 millimeters. Um, the only thing I did notice is they, they don't, you know, these are low cost, so you have to zero them. So whenever you turn them on, just have the jaws yeah. closed and hit zero. We have the really nice, crazy expensive ones. Yeah. Um, these are $150 and they don't have that issue. But not, these- Not solar either. But they're not solar. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is the battery. And if I remove the battery, so it you know, uses the battery as backup. But if I remove mm. it, it's still, Amazing, it's solar. Um, it doesn't need to be too bright. You know, I, I have a fairly dark bedroom and I was like measuring some parts at home and it worked fine. The hardest part is actually remembering which way the battery goes, it goes this way. Okay. okay, so these are solar calipers. I really like these. Um, I love the Mitsu Toyus, they're really great, but honestly, uh, for day-to-day -day usage, these are pretty nice too. Lady Ada, Naomi Wu, recommended, sold. Approved. Okay. Solar sold. Okay. Um, we have more of Star Simpsons kits in stock. The other two kits, we only got one in before the show last week. We have the Steptone Generator, which is a 556 base Forest Mims uh, circuit. It's got, uh, it's kind of like a Atari punk console. And this one's really easy to demo. So I put it over here. Very annoying sounds. So they're really annoying sounds. Okay. But <laughs> and we got another one. We also have a uh, voltage indicator. This one has like a bar graph that will detect voltages. It comes with some alligator clips, so you can uh, clip it on. It can like be a battery checker, for example. Okay. And um, this one I also have put together. Hold on. I was. Let me swap the battery and see. This one's a live demo, because actually, I, I forgot that we had two. Oh, yeah. So... Can we go there, right? No, because I... For, no, you actually... I think you have to have a um, something connected, and I don't have it. Okay. So, not a good live demo, but 
check the site uh, because there's all these images and I think we have a video there. Okay. And um, this one, yeah, it'll, it'll show you a bar graph and it uses an LM339, common uh, transistor, transistor logic. Okay. Both are, we've carried them before, but now we kit them in-house. They're beautiful. You build them, you can show them off. They have forced MIM stuff. Star a lot of history with them. Yeah, these are like classic circuits, so. Yep. You want a piece of history? This is it. There we go. Next up, besides, um, besides Adafruit black filament, I'm gonna say this is the, at least the top one or two colors for filament. <laughs> Look, it's me. Like from far away, you cannot tell the difference. If you want to print me, lady, if you want to print Lady Ada hair, this is what it looks like. This is this is this looks just like this is exactly the same color as my hair. Um, okay. This is uh, Magenta Melt Ink is the company that makes this. No and Pedro really like this filament company. Um, this is two point eight five millimeter filament. Um, when we got this in stock, I even asked them, hey, like most of our filament is 1.75 millimeter. What's the deal with the switch to 2.8 millimeter? And they said, oh, you know, a lot of the printers that only supported 1.75 have been discontinued or like all the, all the printers that they like the most are now, you know, 2.85 is, is the best filament to use with them. So they think that the, the best profile, the best uh, results that they've been able to get are with 2.85 filament, so they recommended that this one we only carry in 285. So um, Ultimaker is what they like to use, and that uses a 285 filament, yeah. so this works great. And they say this is like the highest quality filament that they've seen in a long time, and it's a supplier for many other filament companies. So yeah, and but this is really they make it. So yeah, much great. like the the Lady Ada seal of approval. If no and Pedro say this is the best and it works really great, they know. Yeah, I, I, trust I, th them. I think they are the experts. No, they were like... They're also on camera a lot, so if it doesn't work out, they'd have to deal with it. So they're no, like, no, this is the right one. So we sourced it, we got it. Okay. I wonder, is, it the, is that the same pink as that? I don't know. Let me look at the middle. I might as well shut off. Yeah, it could be. I think this is the same. Oh, yeah, this is the same pink. So this it is what it looks be. like printed. Yeah. You can make your own very... Yeah, that one's like violet, and this one's magenta and teal. So really beautiful color, really vibrant. Um, looks good. Yep. A nice filament. Nice and strong, too. Okay. Well, there's still winter, so that means there's still time to make a snow globe. But in order to make a snow globe, you need the globe part. Yeah. We got them. Okay, so this is this is a little challenging some... to source, but we got them. Yeah, these were actually these were custom made for us. Yeah. So these snow globes come in three parts. There is like you know the bottle part with a big mouth, so you can you can fit you know stuff inside. Perfectly fits a circuit playground, I bet. And then there's this rubber stopper. That's so the water doesn't go in. So the water, I mean, to your it's, electronics. It's ninety nine point nine percent sealed. You still want to use glue when yeah. you finish your when your project's ready to become permanent because the, even though there's like seal and another seal, it's still you know not guaranteed. And then you know a fun project is. So if um, all year, if you want to make a holiday one, but you can do this now. Well, eventually there won't be any snow anyways, so you know you might as well. No, that's, there'll be snow globes. There'll be just only snow globes. Yeah. Then you screw this in, and then this, this kind of pushes the stopper up against the bottle, so it uh, That's beautiful. Stays, uh, Look at that. stays sealed, and then you can have a wonderful snow globe. Um, this has a kind of a translucent Adabot in it, but it also works. We have some guides. It works really well if you have um, figurines, or you can like take photos and laminate them and put them inside as well. Yeah. So get creative. And then, yeah, Circuit Playground or NeoPixel Ring fits perfectly as well, so you can... I like the idea of having, um, you know, when you shake it, it does something. You get a lot of results it. for a pretty simple project. I remember a long time ago, I think, like, Martha Stewart's Snow Globe project was, like, the top project on Martha Stewart's site. Yeah. I think it's time for an electronic project to dethrone Martha Stewart's Snow Globe reign. Yeah. Hold on, let me, let me see if I can flip this. Wait. Yeah, there you go. There you go. I wanted to show it upside. Yay! So that's, that's the little cool. snow globe that we have. So um, build your own. We have a couple guys using Make Code, you use Arduino, yeah. Circuit, you know, Circuit Playground, of course. But also, like, don't do, just do what we do. Come up with your own fun uh, snow globe projects. And I just think I think it's fun to put stuff inside. Like, make okay. it All right. So that's the. Uh, you get only the globe. You provide the water. Yeah, we don't ship that. Okay. Next up, the star of the show tonight, besides you, Lady Ada, is... Itsy Bitsy! This was a coming soon. This was a secret thing we had on our secret channels and leaks. 
We're like, it's coming it up soon. Can you guess what it is? It's super secret. We gotta know. Uh, okay. Okay, sorry. I'm just putting my nice filament silk. away. This is a Phil B. Paint Your Dragon Silk. Everybody, round of applause for Phil B. Silk because yeah. it's the best. Um, itsy bitsy. So, why did I make another dev board? Because. People yeah, why did you make another dev board? <laughs> So that's just, like I wake up, I ask myself that. I was like, when I stop making dead boards? Mm -hmm. um, so I really like the trinket for making projects, but it only has five GPIO pins. And there were a lot of projects that people on the Adafruit staff and like people in our community making guides, they said, we need more pins in the trinket, but it doesn't, I don't want it to be as big as the feather. And there's also a Metro M0 Express itsy bitsy so it has a little flash chip on it with two megabytes of flash oh. this is perfect for running circuit python because you can store audio files or images or code on that two megabyte flash chip so it kind of is like you get a ton of gpio i think it's 23 gpio pins and like 12 of them are analog 13 of them are pwm you get a true analog output okay. it's that cortex m0 i know and love the samd 21 g18 we're going to get 48 megahertz 3 volt logic, 256K of flash, 32K of RAM. When we get the M4 chips all sorted out, we'll have, of course, an M4 version. Everyone can't wait for that. If you like Trinket, you need more pins. This might be for you. Basically, you like Trinket, you need more pins. Feather's a little bit too big. Mm. This is right there in the middle. Um, it has all the capability of the Feather M0 Express, but it's really, really small. But it doesn't have mounting holes. That's the trade off I made. I decided, okay, mm. this one's not going to have mounting holes. No. It's much more compact. So I can Want to show it on the overhead? I will show on the overhead because okay. it is small. It is super small. Let me zoom in to how small it is. So you've got your micro USB here. There's a little uh, dot star LED. Let's see if I plug it in, what happens? Okay, so it's it's doing the little NeoPixel rainbow swirl. So it's got an RGB LED. This is just a single uh, red LED. It has a reset button. The QFN48, SAMD21, G18, and then, I'll unplug this so you can see this a little better. Right here, this little black square is a USON 2x3 millimeter, two megabyte flash. Um, usually we use SOIC flash, but USON flash actually, like it's just small, but it, it works just fine. You get the regulator and power stuff. And there's one other weird thing. I mean, weird, cool thing. Um, there's a single five volt level shifter. so. If you're powering from five volt, the logic level is 3.3 volts in general, right? But then you're like, well, I want to drive NeoPixels, or maybe you have some other, uh, you know, high power LED and you need five volts. Pin five is five volt out. It's output only, and it's logic level shifted up to five volts. So perfect for dri driving NeoPixels. You can see here it says V high out right here. And if you're using Arduino, this pin also has NeoPixel DMA support. We have a, a DMA NeoPixel library, so you can use that. Um, so you don't even have to use any processor time. So yeah, a cute little polka dot over there. Tons and tons of pins. Even got the SWD IO pins available if you would like to debug the chip or program it without the bootloader. But it comes with the bootloader and it has CircuitPython support already and it has Arduino support already. And then uh, maybe we'll have make code support later on. Okay. Oof. Really, yeah. Well, uh, that, I don't know. That was, yeah. Oh, keep yeah. making, you know what? Keep making. Okay. I'll keep making.